When I say the limit as x approaches some value a of a function f of x is equal to l, we said that means that as x approaches a, your function is approaching the value l. Or more precisely, your function becomes arbitrarily close to l for values of x sufficiently close to a. There are two related concepts I want to talk about, and that's the idea of a right-handed and left-handed limit. A right-handed limit is expressed limit as x approaches a from the right. So I'll use plus to denote right. And that's just because on our x-axis, remember when we move in the positive direction, it, it is a plus. A plus, plus is coming. The right-hand side is, is positive. The left-hand side is negative. So the limit as x approaches a from the positive direction, from the right of your function f of x equals l. It means the exact same thing, that as x is getting close to a, your function is getting close to l. But here, we restrict ourselves to just look at the x values that are close to a, but a little bit bigger. So, so close x that are a little bit bigger than a. Similarly, we can define a left-hand limit, the limit as x approaches a from the left, so minus for left, of a function. It's just saying when you look at x values that are a little bit smaller than a, so really close by x values that are just a little bit smaller than a, then as x is getting closer to a from the left-hand side, your function is going to be equal to L. To make sure we understand this, let's go ahead and look at this example of this graph here. So let's say this is the graph of the function y equals f of x. It's a piecewise function. It's divided by little pieces, but that's fine. We can still think about its limits. Let's begin thinking about what's going on at negative 3. What is the limit as I approach negative 3? Well, before we think about this overall limit, let's think about the limit as I approach negative 3 from the left-hand side and the limit as I approach negative 3 from the right-hand side. From the left-hand side just means I'm coming in from the negative direction, from the left. So, so I'm coming towards negative 3 from the left. And as I come down towards negative 3, so I'm actually turning to negative 3, my y values, my function, is headed closer and closer to negative 2. These values being closer and closer and closer to negative 2. Also, when I come in from the right-hand direction, my values are getting closer and closer and closer to negative 2. From both sides, when I get closer, I'm getting closer and closer to negative 2. Now, now, you might protest and be like, but wait a second, isn't my function at negative 3 actually equal to, to 0, it looks like? My function is defined to be, yeah, it is. But these limits aren't asking what happens at negative 3. They ask what happens when we get close to negative 3. So we don't need to worry about what the function equals at the value of negative 3. We can ignore that and just worry about what happens when we're close to negative 3. If a value is very close to negative 3, we're down here at values that are very close to negative 2. So notice from both the left and the right hand side, I'm getting closer to negative 2. And so therefore I say my overall limit is negative 2. My overall limit will be equal to L if and only if both my right hand limit and my left hand limit is equal to L. I have to be getting close to L from both sides in order to say the function overall is getting closer to that limit, to that negative 2. Let's look at another example. For instance, what happens at the limit as I approach negative 2? Well, you might quickly verify that the left-hand limit as I approach negative 2 from the left, to get close and close to negative 2 from the left, is these values are going to be going up to close and closer to zero. And as I approach negative 2 from the right, 
my values will be getting closer and closer to zero as well. And so overall, we'd say the limit of my function as x approaches negative 2 is just 0. Now, in this case, it just so happens that the value of my function at negative 2 really is 0. So, 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 so here, the value of the function agreed with my limit, whereas here it did not. But that's fine. We don't care what, what happens at the value. We just care what happens close by. Let's look at two more values. How about negative 1? What is the limit of my function as x is approaching negative 1? To answer this, we should first think again about the left and right hand limits. What's the limit as I get closer and closer to negative 1 from the left? And what's the limit as I get closer and closer to negative 1 from the right? From the left as I approach negative 1, you can just see as I get closer and closer to negative 1 from, from the left, from this negative direction, I'm coming towards negative 1. My value is going higher and higher. It's going towards 2. It's headed towards 2. Whereas from the right, when I pick values a little bit bigger than negative 1, notice bigger than negative 1 things like point negative 9 and negative 0.99 and negative 0.999. These values, I'm coming towards the, the y value of minus 1. So one way I'm headed up to 2, and the other way I'm flatlining at minus 1. But they go in different directions, 2 and minus 1. And we said that the limit of a function is only going to be equal to L if it's headed to L from both the right and the left. Since the right and left hand limits disagree, we'd say our function does not have a limit. The overall limit does not exist. Or often you'll just see this abbreviated D and E does not exist. Let's look at one more example. The limit as x approaches positive 1. Again, we can think about what happens as we come from the left and what happens when we come from the right. From the left hand side, coming to positive 1, picking these values closer and closer to positive 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, I'm down here at minus 1. From the right-hand side, picking values a little bit bigger than 1, I, I am shooting up higher and higher and higher. It doesn't seem like I'm getting closer to anything. I'm just going arbitrarily high. For now, we'll just say that limit does not exist. One side is just shooting up, not getting closer to anything. There's no L that's approaching. And so therefore we'd say again, since the left and right are doing different things, one is at minus 1, one is flying upwards, where it's say overall the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist. So sometimes your left-hand limit can exist, sometimes your right-hand limit can exist, and if they both exist and they're both equal to the same thing, then your overall limit is also equal to that value L.